Hello and welcome to The Softer Side. I'm your storytelling life coach, Shelley Carney. Today's topic is planning your life, unlocking your growth potential. Thank you for watching The Softer Side, storytelling therapy and life coaching. Please leave a comment and let me know your biggest challenge when it comes to stress relief and what topics you would like to see in the future. Subscribe and click on the bell to be front row center for new videos. Join us in the friendly, supportive live chat room for our live coaching videos and share the Softer Side channel with your friends and family members who need to reduce the stress and anxiety in their lives. So when we're planning our lives, it's important to be aware of any limiting beliefs that might get in our way of planning a goal as big as we need. We might want to stay in our comfort zone and only do the things that have worked well for us in the past. If there's anything that hasn't worked for us, we probably aren't going to try it again. So we need to take a look at those limiting beliefs. And that's what we're going to talk about more today. I can do whatever I decide to do. How many of us go through life hanging on to a belief that we cannot do something simply because we failed at it once before? Over time, we can begin to think that we are not capable of doing a particular thing and we accept this as the truth and limit ourselves to a very confined world. We think to ourselves, I tried that before and it didn't work out. What is the point in trying it again and wasting my time? I don't want to feel like a failure. We reach a conclusion based on a specific set of conditions, then forget to revisit our decisions when things change. This results in missed opportunities, self-imposed blocks, and wasted potential. Even if we feel like we are efficient, productive, and organized, we may still not be doing all that we could. We adapt to what we're used to doing. We compromise. We have all done this without even being aware of it. We've been conditioned. This is how we start to shrink and contract and settle for a life that is safe and less than exciting. Instead, let us look at all the so-called failures in our lives as just stepping stones along our path and decide to respond in a way that is positive, saying, At least I tried. Now I know what doesn't work, so it makes my next attempt clearer. Living a courageous life is a process of elimination, gathering momentum and staying focused on what we want to achieve and trying different approaches until we succeed. Stop confining yourself to a life that is restricted and the belief that you can't do something. Replace those limiting thoughts and beliefs with the understanding that you can do anything if you believe in yourself completely. It doesn't even matter what the outcome is. Just enjoy every experience you encounter in your life and embrace all of it. In the end, which will you regret more? The things you did or the things you didn't do? Ralph Waldo Emerson said, The only person you are destined to become is the person you decide to be. Marilyn Ferguson said, Your past is not your potential. In any hour, you can choose to liberate the future. Confucius said, The will to win, the desire to succeed, the urge to reach your full potential, these are the keys that will unlock the door to personal excellence. Now let's listen to the story of the elephant and the rope. One day, David A young, bright, curious boy was speaking with his neighbor, Mrs. Stevens, a widow about the same age as his father. Mrs. Stevens was watering her garden. She asked David, How is your father getting along? David's mother had divorced his father and moved far away almost two years ago. Mrs. Stevens had a lot of empathy for them after losing her own husband and young daughter in a car accident a few months before that. Since the divorce, his father had focused totally on David and was closed off to everybody else. David's father, Mr. Jeffries, drove around the corner just then. He quickly got out of the car and called to David, Son, 
Come to the end of the block with me. There's something I want you to see. Mrs. Stevens smiled and waved a friendly hello, but Mr. Jeffries merely nodded at her, and she hesitantly went back to her watering. David and his father hurried together to the main street at the end of their block. That's when David was surprised to see a parade of vehicles driving into his town to set up a circus to entertain and delight the people who lived there. David asked his father to take him to see the circus as they unloaded their trucks and set up their tents. His father agreed, thinking it would be a wonderful learning opportunity for David to see the work involved in a traveling show. David and his father arrived at the site where the circus was setting up, just in time to marvel as a large elephant effortlessly pulled on a rope to raise the biggest tent. Look, Dad! See the big, strong elephant. Yes, my son, the elephant is the biggest and strongest animal that walks the earth. David and his father continued to wander around the site, pointing out the strange and beautiful. They saw acrobats, jugglers, and many different people working together to set up the tents before dark. Suddenly, they came upon two more elephants standing together. Each one had a small rope, tied around his foot attached to a small wooden stake set into the ground. David asked his father, Dad, why are these big, strong elephants tied up with those little ropes? I don't know, son. Let's find out. The elephant trainer was working nearby, setting up the food and water for the animals. David and his father approached the trainer to ask about the elephants. Excuse me, sir, David's father called out. These elephants are magnificent. The trainer replied with a friendly chuckle. Yes, they also eat a lot and need much care. My son and I are confused. These huge creatures are held by only a small rope tied to their front leg. No chains or cages. Yes, that's right, the trainer answered. We saw another elephant raising a big tent by itself. They are incredibly strong and have great potential to do amazing things. The trainer nodded. Yes, Goliath is very strong and well-trained to be of great help to the circus. David's father continued. How is it that the elephants do not break away from these small ropes? They simply stand here and make no attempt to get away. Are they not curious about their new environment? Do they not wish to wander off? Surely they are strong enough to do so. The trainer answered, It is a matter of conditioning. You see, when they are very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them, and at that age, it's enough to hold them. As they grow up, they are conditioned to believe they cannot break away. They believe the rope can still hold them, so they never try to break free. David and his father were astonished. These animals could at any time break free from their bonds, but because they believed they couldn't, they were stuck right where they were. David and his father thanked the trainer and walked away as the sun began to set in the late summer sky. On their way home, David looked up to his father and asked, What do you think about those elephants, Dad? I believe we can learn an important lesson from those elephants, David. We must never let our old beliefs keep us from trying to break free. If we decide we want to try something, we may have failed at before. When they arrived back at home, they noticed Mrs. Stevens finishing her work in the garden next door as she put away her tools. Mr. Jeffries tilted his head in thought and asked her, Mrs. Stevens... Would you like to share some supper with David and me this evening? David smiled, and Mrs. Stevens gasped in surprise. Yes, Mr. Jeffries, I thought you'd never ask. So what do you think? What would you have thought when you saw those elephants tied up and not able to break free from such a small rope? Can you break free from your limiting beliefs? and move forward in your life. Let's ask ourselves these questions. Do I go through life with a belief that I cannot do something simply because I failed at it once before? 
Am I being held back by old, outdated beliefs that no longer serve me? How can I change my thoughts to create a better life than I have right now? We can just take a good look at our beliefs. And I think if we write them down, that's very helpful. And then looking at those beliefs, decide for ourselves which ones are limiting or holding us back and which ones propel us forward. Which ones make us feel strong and enthusiastic and confident? And which ones do the opposite? Once we have those strong beliefs, those empowering beliefs figured out, those are the ones we want to focus on. Continually practice looking at them and thinking them and believing in them. And that way, we can change our beliefs over into something more powerful and that will take us forward further towards our goals. Don't forget that you can get a booklet of these slides to have the story for yourself so you can share it with family and friends. And that's available to you at esofterside.com. So I hope that you'll take a look at that. And that link is in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching today's video, Planning Your Life, Unlocking Your Growth Potential, and Learning About the Elephant and the Rope. And I will see you again very soon. I want to share with you an amazing free mini course I've developed for my subscribers to reduce stress and achieve inner peace. This mini course provides tips, exercises, and guided meditations to further enhance relaxation and bring calm to a frazzled life. Simply visit eSofterSide.com to get your free mini course. And while you're there, you can also schedule a free coaching call with me to address your personal needs when it comes to releasing pain and achieving happiness. I look forward to seeing you again soon. Peace be with you. Namaste.